Welcome to our channel and thanks for tuning in. Now I know that God has a word not just for you, but he also has a word through us for you. Now we're about to start. Make yourself comfortable and let's venture into God's word together. So we want to finish up where we started off uh, from before by the grace of God. Uh, before we do that, let's pray together. Why don't you pray for yourself and ask that Lord, all these weeks we've been talking about birthing uh, your vision here on earth. And I've presented myself as a vessel that you can use to, to bring forth your will, to bring forth your, uh, it could be a new ministry, it could be a new gifting, uh, it could be a new business, it could be a new invention, a new idea, uh, a, new, a new entity, something new that you're bringing into planet earth. Lord, I'm asking, use me as a vessel. Use me as a vessel. And let the word, Father Lord, of my mouth, the, the word, Father Lord, of my mouth and the meditation of our collective hearts, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. I'm asking you, my Father, Lord, that you would just lay your hand, Lord, upon every single heart that is here today in the name of Jesus. Lay your hand upon me, Lord, as a vessel, Lord, to communicate your word. Lord, let it come accurate. Let it come, Father Lord, unhindered. Let it come unfettered, Father Lord, with man, in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray. The Bible says Jesus was speaking and it said that you will take out that, of, that of, of what which is his and you will make it known unto us. I pray that you will do just that in this place today in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you will do. I release myself, Father Lord, and your children, Lord, into your, into your move, into your tutelage. Lord, do with us as you please in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen like you ate breakfast. Amen. To all of you at breakfast. Wow. I mean that I thought you were fasting. Oh, okay. Just check it. Aren't we in Lent? Are, are, we, are, are, we, are we in Lent? Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So. Um, we're, we're hoping by the grace of God that we will be wrapping up some of the conversations that we've been having uh, for the couple of weeks and then we'll move on to something new uh, by next week. Well, next week is Thanksgiving Sunday, so it's a, it's a different kind of feel uh, for next, sorry, this then is my eye, uh, for next week Sunday. But, but today, you know, we've been, we've been using the analogy of somebody who's gone to, they've gone to the, to the hospital, the, the conception has taken place, and after conception has taken place, then we go to the delivery room and we birth this, this idea, this baby, this child, this God, God uh, entity is now, is now here on earth. But I was doing further research and I discovered that there was, there was actually a story of a nurse uh, a couple of years ago who over her career, it is alleged that she probably was responsible for over 5,000 switches of babies. So she gave the wrong baby for fun. Yeah. Allegedly, I don't know what the final decision was. Someone like Toby who can go and do her, her research. Toby's a, king, a queen researcher. I mean, if you put up any strange story in the overflow group, I'm just waiting for Toby to respond. <laughs> she, exactly, if she comes and says, oh, yeah, that's true, I say, yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. Toby just comes and with dot, 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 you know, mm, mm, but I just delete the message, <laughs> you know. But it goes to show that there's got to be a way to test. There's got to be a way to know that the idea that I am running with is God's idea. Because the danger is to run with an idea that looks good, sounds good, feels good, but is not good. An idea that, that everybody else is hailing and everybody else saying, yeah, go for it. There was a prophet during the days of Jeremiah. And the prophet came and told the king, he says, look, king, this is what is going to happen. He took a yoke and put the yoke. You know what a yoke is? Right? It's a, it's a wooden thing that they use for animals. And they used to tie animals more or less together. So you have a yoke on an oxen and it, it makes two act as one. That's why the Bible says do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. 
because it makes two begin to operate as one. It means that when you want to now do your own thing, the other person, because they don't see what you see, they don't, they don't have the same belief system that you believe, they don't have the same vision that you have, so they want to go somewhere else. And if we're joined, if we're joined together by the neck, and I want to go this way, and you want to go that way, one of us is going to break its neck. That's why the Bible says do not be unequally yoked, because you're not going in the same direction. So somebody will be hurt. Or, or, because obviously I think I'm stronger than you physically. Yeah? Are you cool with that? I don't want to know. Those online, I say, oh, is it because you're a man? Is it because you're a man? Yeah, it is actually because I'm a man. I am genetically stronger. If I now decide to force you and just decide, you know what, I'm not going to struggle, then it means if that's not where you are going, you will forever be bitter. Because you will forcibly, you've been forcibly moved in this direction, and you're not moving in the way that you believe you should be going, where God wants you to be going, and the, 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 the bitterness that grows out of that. Now, can you blame this individual that is going that way? Not necessarily. That's the way they're going. That's where they should be going. The problem is not the individual that's going there. The problem is, why did you yoke yourself to that person? You could have been free to do your own thing, to go your own way. But now that you're yoked to that person, well, unless you now decide, no, we're going this way. And then they decide, we're going this way. Sounds like a marriage seminar. <laughs> I think it's one of those ones where it's just, I think this February 14 is still in the air for a lot of people. So we just need to just make sure, don't run around, be yoking yourself to anybody just because of Valentino. It will shock you. Because <laughs> after Valentine has gone, you are still yoked to that person. <laughs> Amen. But the prophet broke that wooden yoke. And he said to the king, he says, O king, as this yoke is broken, God will break the yoke of the Babylonians over you. And everybody around there said, Amen. Jeremiah was there. He too said, Amen turned around and he was leaving. As he was going, the Lord said, go back. That person that spoke, I did not send them. Go and tell them now. You have broken the yoke of wood. I will place on you a yoke of iron that you cannot break. The guy got into trouble. He got put in a pit. He got put in prison. He got beaten. He didn't want to open his mouth. did not want to speak. But there was a word of God that was within him. It's not everything that you say amen to. It's not every good word that comes from God. Just because it is encouraging is not a sure banker that it is of the Lord. There are some things that we can look at. There are some, there are some attributes. See, if you are unsure, I'm, I'm quite sure that, that uh, Levi is... Is um, obviously we know you are the mother because obviously you know you did all the, the work, you know. But uh, why are you looking at Shego like that? <laughs> Shego, you should have seen the way she looked at you. But if there were ever, apart from the, the resemblance, if there were ever some, what's the word I'm looking for? Questions, uh, concerns about the paternity of the child. There's a thing that people do now. It's a it's called a paternity test. There's a way to test. See, we don't leave it to chance. You can test if that child belongs to that daddy. Can you test which idea is where that God is the, the father of the idea? Is there a way to test that, that business, that ministry, that, that invention, that that is God? That God... Here's the reason why you need to test that. Listen, if you want to come up with your own idea, nobody's saying don't come up with your own idea. You have a right to. You have every right to come up with your own idea. The uh, Bible says many are the plans of a man's heart. Many are the plans of a man's heart. But only the one of the Lord shall be established. Which means there's only one that God will put his name to. You can put your name on every other one. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't have a problem with that. God does not have a problem with that. But there's only one that God will say, I put my name, my stamp on this one. 
So where the danger is, is it's not how many ideas do I have, but if I'm claiming this is from the Lord, and it is not, he will not defend it. He will not support it. He will not encourage it. He will not bless it. Doesn't mean that it won't be blessed. It just won't be by the Lord. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? So knowing the paternity of this idea, it matters. The baby is out. The baby is born. The baby is now getting ready to, to grow. But we want to know which child am I going to be raising in my house. Um, I'll be using loads of different uh, examples, including where we are, including Florida Rivers. Because if you've not done it before, you need to. You need to. I've had to many a times just to make sure, Lord, what we're doing, is this what you said? Is this the one? Did I get this from you or did I see it on TV? Did I hear it? Some, some good testimony somewhere? Oh, you have a good thing to do. Or is this, is this what you planted in my spirit that needs to be birthed? And the reason why I can run without looking back is because I'm convinced. Convinced. And here are some of the, the things that you look for as a paternity test to know, is this God's idea or is this just me thinking? Is this God's dream or is it just mine? The first thing, and this is going to sound funny, but please hear me out. If the child that comes out is half man, half dog, let me not use anybody in this room. If you go to visit a friend, Toby, you have a friend, and you went to visit the friend, and the friend gave birth, and there's no name to this friend, it's just a friend, right? And the friend gave birth, and the child that came out of that person was half man, half dog. You know for a fact the boyfriend or the husband of that friend is not the father. Why? The nature, the intrinsic nature of that entity is different from the nature of the, of the father. So here it is, if, if anything that you say comes from God contradicts the word of God, don't even, you don't need to pray. You don't need to pray at that point to say, oh, is this the Lord? It's not. I can say that for a fact. Why? He exalts his word. If there's anything that you're pursuing that is not in line with God's word, I'm telling you now, ditch it. Listen, I'm not saying that it is not written. It is written, um, uh, give me one of the, like an invention. I just realized that there was, a, there was, a, there was an African-American man that invented the traffic lights. I didn't know this, you know. So it was, I was quite interested when, when I found that out. Now, there's no way in scripture that said, thou shalt invent a traffic light. However, is it in the, is it in the nature of God to protect his own species? Yes, it is. Is it in the nature of God to care? Because when I read the history of this gentleman, he was standing outside of his office and he was looking down and he saw the way cars, because you know when cars started, everybody knows the history, well not everybody knows, the history of cars, it all started with, with what? Horses. So horses, and then the horses started to pull carts. And then they started pulling carriages. And the more elaborate the carriage, that's why you see, the, go to the original cars, they all look like, Carriages without the horse in front. Because they, they now developed what is called an engine. So the engine went on the inside. We didn't need the horse anymore. Why do you think they call the power? The more powerful the engine, they call it fire, horsepower. Basically, operates with the same force as 12 horses, 4 horses, 6 horses, 6 horsepower, 5 horsepower, all this kind of thing. So as the, 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 the automobile started to gain speed, before it was okay, you didn't need traffic lights, you didn't need zebra crossing, you didn't need anything. Because if a car was coming, you were probably walking faster than the car. You could run faster than the car. But all of a sudden, as the engine began to develop even more, it became more treacherous to walk on the road. It became more dangerous. 
There were no, we all come into a junction, it is who makes it out first. Could you imagine that now? Well, some of us don't have to imagine. Some people have been there. If you've ever driven in certain countries of the world, certain cities of the world. I mean, I went to this city and I saw a traffic light and I, I came away from there thinking this thing is a suggestion. When it goes red, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a conversation. It's like it goes red, you have to ask yourself, okay, do I want to stay or do I want to move forward? You see, they, do you know what? They actually advise you, don't cross on a zebra crossing. Better to cross elsewhere. I don't understand that. Like how? How? Because on a zebra crossing, said, people are more like, because you're too, you're too confident. So you have just come from London. Ah, no, no, no. When you, when you step on zebra, you feel that they will stop for you. They will carry you. So all of those things were now happening. And this guy's name was Garrett something. I can't remember his surname now. He decided, no, something has to be done. Too many people are losing their lives. Too many people are getting injured. And I believe that God is always looking. Whom can I, who can I entrust? Who can I entrust with, with this idea or with this thought or with this ministry or with this gift or with, with this something? Who can I trust to be a blessing? The first thing you want to check is, is the nature of this idea. Is it after the nature of God? Is it in line with the word? The Bible, I just quoted it um, not long ago, John chapter 16. When Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, because remember we said the Holy Spirit is the one that will deliver the seed. He's the one that will bring it to make it known. He's the one that, that, that has direct access and communication with your spirit. So everything that you receive from the Lord is the Holy Spirit that is the carrier of that, that brings it to you. And Jesus said he will not speak of himself. He will take out of what is mine and deliver it to you. So why do you think he's going to give you something that is contrary to scripture? That is the basic way to test. The first way to test is this child of the same nature. Is it of the same species as the, the so-called father? If it's of a different nature as the father, I'm not saying feature, I said nature. It might look slightly different. I mean, Shegun would, would be praying that he's as handsome as, as, as Levi. As fine, uh, I beg, your bow tie God doesn't allow. <laughs> as fine as Shegu is, Levi is an upgrade. The way he's just there with his afro, just shouting. <laughs> so their features might differ, but their nature is the same. I remember when I was uh, 1989, I was very, very ill. In, in Nigeria, and it was quite, quite harrowing at that time. And towards the end of that, I, I, I needed to have a transfusion. And for some strange reason, the only person, they were looking for who could help, who could do, who was, who was what do they call it, who was a match, who was a good match to do that. Now with blood, you can find quite a few, a range of people. In my case, it was only my dad that could do that. Um, and he, I remember as a young man, my dad lay there, I lay here. It's not one of those ones where they just take it and they freeze it already and bring it and just hook it up. No, my guy was there, I was lying there. And literally, I think, wow. And then at the end, they give him milk to, to drink. In my young age, that made such an impression in my head. Because for me, I, what, I, what I saw was like he was giving his life so that I could have life. Because they, at 1989, they had, they had said, the doctor had told my, my parents that he needs this, then otherwise he might not be at that time. But there are some trans, uh, transplants that you can't just get any donor. You have to get a DNA match. Do you know that some people, that's when they discover that their parents are not their parents? Because they have to do a test to find out, okay, are you an accurate match? Otherwise, the body will reject that kidney, that liver, whatever it is. 
And for some people, it's at that point that they now discover that that person, the person that I've been calling that, I, I watched um, this um, program many, many, uh, say many years ago, it's not that long ago, House. House MD is a, is a doctor. And there was a particular episode that, that that's exactly what happened. So if we are not of the same nature, see, we can fake it for as long as we like. But there will come a point in time where the true father of that entity will show up, will have to show up. Will have to show up. So the idea that you have, the business that you're thinking about, the ministry that you say, God, place this upon my heart. If that ministry is not of the nature of God, if it's not in line with his word, I'm telling you now, that is not the Lord. You can have all the giftings, you can, you can do as many miracles as you like, if it is not of the nature of God. This is why 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us, it says, if I speak with the tongues of men and tongues of angels, but I have not love. Why? God is love. So if, it is, if there's no genuine love there, forget it. God is saying, that's not me. I didn't do that. You did that or He said, if I were to work mighty wonders, if I were to give up my body to be burnt, but I have not love. In other words, he said, if, if it doesn't have the nature of God, he says, that God is not the one that is at the root of that. He will not lay claim to that. He will not pay for that child. Let's move on. Number two. So the first thing that it has to be of the same nature of that. Number two is that if it is of God, it will be out of your league. It will be out of your league. Why? The, look. Can you imagine? The, it's, I heard Dr. Bakker say this many years ago. He says, a, an elephant that gives birth to a baby. What's a baby elephant called? Baby elephant. Is it calf? I don't know. Something like that. Yeah? If a baby elephant never has to pray to be big. Do you get that? Why? See, it's because they're big in their family. It's natural to them. It is. An elephant can't give birth to an ant. An elephant can't give birth to a rat. Okay, let me, let me put it in another way so that you can make the connection. An elephant can't give birth to an elephant that looks like a rat. Do you understand what I mean? The size comes from the family that they come from. So if they say the idea is from the almighty God, then it will be an almighty idea. It is big because the, the, the person who takes ownership of it is big. It is written into the DNA of that idea that it is bigger than you. You know, sometimes, this especially, and I don't know how we're going to link this, but I feel necessary to, to say this, especially when it comes to relationships. People use, God told me a lot. God said, God said, God said. God said, God said. And if you take it that God said that, you have to test what nature, what nature does this entity, if it's the, the woman that's saying God told me, if it's the man that said God told me, what nature is this person? And the relationship, what nature is that relationship? What nature? What, what does it bring? Does it bring me closer to God? Or does it drive me away from God? Does it frustrate my relationship with God? Does it make me look more like God? Or does it make me look more like the devil? What nature? You know, some people are fervent in spirit till they got married. Some people's I mean, their gifting was sharp till they got married. There's some ladies, I mean, when they pray, they pray till they got married. 
And I'm not saying that because of enjoyment, because you know sometimes, when you, especially in the early years, you're just enjoying yourself, you're relaxing, all that. that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where the, the, the man or the woman now becomes such a frustration. There's like a, a blockage over your head. I did say, I don't know how to link that, but you know. God's dream is bigger than you. It has to be. <laughs> Are we good? Oh, Levi. Is he with daddy? Amen. <laughs> He's on the job. <laughs> Somebody help him, please. You can see him struggling. Amen. See, one, one of the ways you will know that this is God's dream is this. When he tells you, it'll make you shake. When he tells you, you kind of go, ah, no, 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 sir. <laughs> it's okay, sir. I can't do this. I am not big enough. Exodus chapter 3, Moses was there at the, at the uh, burning bush. And when God tells him what to do, go to Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses, Pharaoh. Nah, it's not somebody like me. No. There are other people that can do this. It's, it's not, I told you, for those who I spelt it out for, when God told me what he told me in Kenya, my first reaction was, Lord, can we, he said seven, I said, sir, sir can we do three? And he didn't answer. He just left it. I had to come back and repent myself in my bedroom. I said, okay, if you say seven, then seven. God's dream. He gives you something. See, God is not that as he's not as interested in the end of the project because you are the project. He's looking to make you into something. He's looking to make you into something. So, whatever project he gives you, it will stretch you. It is part of the plan. It will, it, will, it will make you move in directions that you have never moved before. You will have to enter into realms that you never knew about before. Why? God is interested in the person that you become at the end of the project. It will be a shame if you completed the project, but you yourself were disqualified. So God is looking to, to, to increase you. He's looking to stretch you. He's looking to build your faith. That's his desire. One of the things that God makes sure that he does is this. He gives you a dream that only you cannot do it. If the dream, you, you are self-sufficient. You know, uh, what do you call them? I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made man. Really? Then you are not, that's not God's idea. I can tell you that now. If you think, I can do it by myself, I don't need anybody. I'm telling you now, if you can do it by yourself, it's not God's idea. It's not God's idea. Listen, there are parts of it that you have to do. There are parts of the journey that only you can do. Nobody else can do that for you. But if God placed the idea in you, because it's out of your league, you will seek help. You will need to seek help. One of the reasons why God gives you an idea that is bigger than you so that you don't think that you are God. So you never get to the place where you think that I... I can do this. You remember the, the, the king that, that got up? Uh, Herod did that as well. And he gave an oration. So amazing. The people said, is this a man that has spoken? Sounds like the voice of a God. And he too, you received him. Yeah, I'm deep like that. Right there, he fell and worms ate him. Right there. The same thing happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Got himself all pumped up. Oh, I'm a this. I'm a that. The message, the Lord sent him a message. He said, that for seven years, you will crawl around like an animal and you will eat grass like an animal. See, I don't know how you read the Bible, but it, it, it baffles me. For seven years, that happened. And after the seven years, he came back. And he gave, uh, he, he gave an oration to the Lord, like a testimony, to testify to the Lord. Question, when he was mad for seven years eating grass, why didn't anybody take over the throne? 
Would that still happen today? Do you think that will still happen today? Immediately his madness has started and he's on the floor eating grass. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are swearing in the next president because the president is incommunicado. <laughs> well, actually, that's the wrong language. Incommunicado basically means we can't. Toby was your own. Abba. Not only you. <laughs> but Hezekiah came back. God designs it. Look, this ministry, can I do this by myself? I know for a fact I can't. For a fact, I know I can't. I don't need, I don't need anybody to convince me of that. For a fact, I know I can't. Are there aspects that I can do? Yes. Can I do all the different aspects? I can try. But if it is what God showed me, listen, if I ever get to the point where I think, you know what, burn everybody else. I'll do this by myself. Like you guys, well, okay, cool. Do you, do you. I'm going to do this by myself. I guarantee you it will never be what God showed me. Guaranteed. It can be a nice small thing that works, but not what he showed me. Because what he shows is bigger than all of us. After he met with Moses in Exodus chapter 3, and Moses said, oh Lord, but please send somebody else. God said, no, I'm with you. Don't worry, I've got you. Go. What next did he say? He said, I have spoken to Aaron, your brother. And he will come and he will serve you. He says, Moses, you will be my prophet. Aaron will be your prophet. And all of a sudden, people gravitate. God called uh, David as king. Even when they tried to ruin David's kingship and they sent him into the wilderness, did God not send to him the indebted, the, the depressed, the dejected people? They came. They found him. Somehow, they found him. Somehow, they found him. There was only one man that I know. Anybody help me out? That the, the, the mandate that was laid upon this individual, okay, there's one and a half. The mandate that was laid upon this person, there was nobody else there to help him. I said there was nobody else. Samson, Jesus, ah, Jesus that, 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 that I went to go and choose. He went to fast and pray and chose 12. There's one man. It's so bait. It's so bait, it's annoying. Jeremiah. <laughs> Even said in Yoruba, as if I don't speak English. <laughs> no. Elijah was even rebuked. Ah. Huh? Samson was a failure. <laughs> no, is it? Yeah, I know, but hey, excuse me. <laughs> no. Eh? Yes, ma'am. Adam. No, Adam had named all the animals before Eve showed up. It was after the naming of all the animals that God then said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a help me. So understand that in this process, uh, uh, John the Baptist, but then he had disciples, but his disciples were, I don't know what they did. That's why I said, oh, I don't know what they did. I'm sure they did something. Yeah, well, they were sending them. To, they were errand boys to go, and do, to go and do things. You know? So the moment he stepped into that role, he played that role. God did all the things that God needed to do for him to play that role. Even God knew, uncle, if you continue to do this by yourself, you will not fulfill the full picture. You cannot fulfill the full picture on your own. Why? If it is God's idea, it is an illegal by itself. It is out of your league. You will need others. You will need to bend your knees. You will need to pray. If it has not driven you to prayer, oh no, it's not God. If you're just there just thinking about it and you're working everything out and all is well, nothing, 
you, you dreamt it. You came up with it. And it's fine. Remember what I said. It's fine. If you come up with it, it's fine. Not a problem. But if it's God's idea, it will drive you to your knees. Why? You know. It needs the, oh, it needs the, the, the father of the project is needed. His blood is needed to make it run. You go to your knees. There are aspects of it that will even make you cry. But that's because it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. How else shall we test? Not only is it bigger than you, it is also not about you. If that dream, if flowing rivers is set up so that for me, if it is for me, then you should know it is not God. It's not God. If the business, and for anybody who is in business, right? If you are in business just to make, you know, to make money from people, you're in trouble. You're in business to make money. Don't get me wrong. But if your focus is how can I get money off people, be careful. Instead, look how can my business serve people. Money will come. Money will come. If you have learned how customer service, how important customer service is. There's some people that just raise up their prices and they treat people like rubbish. And you think that because you've got raised prices, you will get greater income or greater profit. Lie. There are other people that have learned, if I treat this guy well, I've got a, a, a customer for life. He will keep coming. I worked within the sales and marketing uh, world. I used to tell people, we had different, we had about 12 products that we would offer people in the end. Other people would go try to sell the products. I never did. I never did. And in a company of about 3,500 people, I was one of the, in fact, I was the first person to cross the mark when we, we had this company-wide uh, competition and we're going to get a free trip, all expenses paid to Marrakesh for a couple of days, hotel, flight, everything. I was the first person to qualify. Why? I was not the highest paid, neither was I the highest in rank, but I'd learned something. If I come to your house, I'm selling me. Once you buy me, Everything that comes with me, you will buy. If I'm selling you products, you'll be, okay, I like this one, I don't like this one, I like this one. But have you noticed that there are some people that if they send you a link, you open it? And other people, even if the link is genuine, because it came from them, you just, you just, you know, there are some people, I've just given you an example now. Toby has shown me that she's, she's diligent. She's not easily taken by um, rumors and just because everybody's saying it doesn't make it true. So she, she's shown that diligence over, over a period of time so that now, if she says it's not true, even if it is true, the fact that she said it's not true will give me pause to think, Do you know what, I don't think it's true. Even though it's true, I'm not saying you've done that. But even if it were true, the fact that she says it's not true, I've seen her diligence, I've bought into her integrity. Now whatever she's selling in that line, when it comes to news, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. So instead of trying to ram uh, uh, products down people's throats, no, you become a person of value. When God gives you something to do, God is looking beyond you. The moment it starts becoming about you, oh, I want to do this, my empire, my this, my that. Listen, if I'm working with you and we get to that stage, I'm talking to my capacity as a pastor, and I'm encouraging you, mentoring you, and you, I start hearing you talking, oh, my, 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 I got, I've done it before, I'll back out. I'll back out. Back out straight. Everybody remember there's a woman by the name of Hannah. 
Hannah asked of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 1 into 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 1 was just about Hannah's frustration. Penina was just frustrating her throughout. By 1 Samuel chapter 2, she cries unto the Lord. The Lord gives her a son. And she says, if you give me a son, I will what? Give him back to you. Hold on to that because that's one of the tests. That's one of the tests. If, to know, if, for me to know that you say he's from God, don't worry. I guarantee you everything that God gives you, he will come back and he'll say, give me. Everything God gives you, I'm telling you now, if he never comes back to say, give me, give me, give me back. Be careful. Now, let me calm your nerves. When he's saying, give me back, it's not because he wants to take it from you. It's because he wants to make it bigger than what you thought before. Listen, Hannah, he said to the Lord, give me a son, I will give him back to you. By two years, that's the time for weaning, son was old enough, Hannah took the child and went back, gave it to the Lord. It was God that gave Hannah that child. Yes, Elkanah and Hannah had to, to consummate their union, they had to, be, they had to have sex together, to have, but it was God. It was the word of the Lord that, that, that gave the spark for that. Um, Abraham and Sarah, the same thing. After Isaac was old enough, what did God say? Abraham, give me your son, your only son, the one whom you love. We can, should we go on through scripture? John the Baptist, right from the beginning, the, um, Elizabeth and um, his, his husband, Zacharias. Elizabeth and Zacharias were told he will be a man of the field. He's not going to be like everybody else. This guy is going to, he's going to leave. I'm calling him into something else. Jesus, right from his birth, Mary and Joseph knew, even from the gifts that the, the wise men gave, the, the myrrh was signifying his death. When they went to present him in the, in the temple, and Anna saw him, ah, no, the sword that's going to pierce your heart. So everything that God gives that is from God, he will come and he will say, no, give me. Why? Not because he wants to rob you of that thing, but because that thing was not given to you for you. It was given to you to be a blessing to all, to more than you. So if all you do is just looking at yourself and this thing is just for me, how it serves me, how it, how it helps me, and if that's all it is, then it's your idea, not God's. God's idea is bigger than you. And because it's bigger than you, it's not about you. It's not about you. It transcends you. He puts you in a place so that you can be a blessing. David understood this. Saul did not. Saul thought that the kingdom, that he was set up as king over the kingdom so that mighty men could serve him. And by the end of Saul's reign, the Bible says that there were only two people in the whole land that had swords. Saul and his son Jonathan. And all the mighty men. In, fact, in Saul's reign, when they did his coronation, the day they were, corona they were doing the coronation for Saul, the Bible says that mighty men of valor followed after him. Mighty men of valor followed after Saul. By the end of Saul's life, where were they? They were wasted on the hills of Gilboa. Wasted. The dream that you said God gave you, who is it serving? Whose life is it imparting or impacting? How is it being a blessing to beyond just you? How is it, how is it lifting other people? Whether people pay for the service or not, because some of, some of these things I'm talking about are businesses. Whether they pay for the service or not, is it being a blessing to them or is it just to make money from them? If you can get that in business, it will transform, it will set your business apart from others. Because with, with other people's business, people will feel used. With yours, 
they feel edified. They are willing to part with their money because no, when I when I when I went to her 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 her, her what? When I went to her media company, I went to I went to is it um, Pax Media? Is that the is that the name of the media company? Pax Production. You know, when I when I got Pax Productions to do, it was beyond just capturing what happened. It was beyond just the no, there was something about it that made me feel made me feel good, made me feel right. I saw myself in a new light. It brought out something that I did not even know in me. Why won't they locate you again? Not you're the one that's just stressing them. Look, somebody, a pastor called me. Says, sir, one of your people, I gave them a project to do because of you. And I'm only telling you this out of respect. I will never do that again. I said, please, forgive us. What happened? He said, they had not even finished the job. They're already calling me. Eh, the balance. You have not paid the balance. He said, but we will pay you. You've not finished the job. Eh, no, if I don't receive the balance, I'm not finishing it. Is that what we agreed? That's not what we agreed. Eh, well, I need the balance. I need... Okay, okay. Call the secretary. Pay this person the balance. Then called me. If you chase money, I'm telling you, if that's what you're chasing, you will eat today and you starve tomorrow. Leave an impression in the hearts of people. The, the, that, that entity, that thing that you're doing, that thing that, that you say God put, placed on your heart is to serve people. So if you're hurting people, thinking you're serving God, it's not God. It's not God. The, the scriptures were put in place to build the people up. The Pharisees had turned it around. Now they had put it as a burden on people. It was no longer helping people. It was destroying people's confidence, destroying their self-esteem. It was ruining their relationship with God. It was becoming a barrier between them and God. What did Jesus do when he showed up? Jesus came and he showed them. who He said, you think that God is your father. Think all this thing is, is part, if you take the fingerprint of what you're doing and lay it over the, with the fingerprint of the Lord, you think there will be any match? There's no DNA match there. It says you are of, the, of your father, the devil. That day was an eye-opener for them. All along, they thought that this is God's idea until they discovered, no. Jesus said, no. The nature of what you are doing is not about the people any longer. Any ministry, any business, any idea, any invention that is about just sucking from people, what you can get, what you can get. I'm telling you now, it's your idea, not God. And that's me being kind. Because to be unkind is to say that it's not even your own idea. That's the devil's idea to ruin people. And it's looking, just like God is looking for a vessel, who can I use? Who will I send? The devil too is looking around thinking, well, I need to do something, but I need a vessel. That's what happened in the, in the, in the Last Supper. The Bible says, Jesus said, whomsoever I give this muscle to, I dip it, whomsoever I give it to, it will be the person that will betray me. He dipped it and he gave it, and Judas accepted it. I don't know how, I don't know why, but he did. And if it was me, I'm like, I lie. lie. I said, sir, please. <laughs> no, no, sir. No, no, take it. Ah, mm -mm. After what you said, <laughs> I will not take it. But the moment he took it, what did the Bible say? Satan entered him. That means the devil had been looking. Whom can I use? And in the spirit, Judah said, here I am, use me. If what you're dreaming of, this is why it hurts me when a ministry is set up and the people are in trouble, the people are, are, are oppressed, suppressed, depressed. But the man or the woman of God that is in the lead 
is just being benefited. Just being, they're they are being built up and the people are in, in agony. Then that ministry was not set up to help the people. That ministry was there, to, it was set up to set up the man or the woman of God. The Bible says David, having served his generation, he went and slept to be with the Lord. That was the hallmark of his, of his kingship. He served his generation. Till today, he is the greatest king that Israel ever had. Solomon is the richest. David is the greatest. They do not call the Messiah the son of Solomon. He's the son of David. Because Jesus' kingship was going to come after the nature of David, not Solomon. He's not coming here to come, to come and show how, how rich he was. How rich, oh, look how rich I am. That's not his business. He came to serve. So that idea that you've been talking about, that business that you've been talking about, the ministry, that, that gifting. You know, some people, that have, they have a gift. They have a spiritual gift. But that gift is set up just to show off who I am so that people can fear them. You know, all right, be careful if I touch you now. And What? Okay, so, so what? She starts rolling. And so, so what? What? What do we do with that? I don't get it. No, seriously. Think about it. What, 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 what is that? You, can you use that now to go to the bank? I go, did you see what happened? <laughs> can you please deposit money in my account? You know, there's some people that, that the gift is set up to elevate themselves and to put themselves on such a pedestal that the people don't feel that they can relate. It's not about you. The moment it starts becoming about you, can I tell you this? If you're with somebody that they, you're, you're, you're helping, you're supporting, you're encouraging, the moment it becomes about them, warn them. If they don't listen, get somebody else to join you to warn them. If they don't listen, I'm telling you now, back out. Back out, because here is what I know will always happen. One day, this is, this is on the good scenario. This is the good scenario. The good scenario, God will show up and say, enough, you're doing this one in my name. This is not of my nature. Shut it down. And he will shut it down. And whoever is involved in it will get shut down too. And that's when it is good. If it is not good, he will let you carry on. Do you remember he said that? The wheat and the tears were growing together. What did they want to do? They were going to rake it up. He said, da, 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 leave it. Wait till judgment, harvest, which is judgment. Can you imagine? God forbid. That is a judgment day that you now discover. It is the kindness of God that he shuts you down now. That's the kindness of God. If you wait till judgment and then you find out, I've just been laboring. And you, look, anything that causes you to hurt people just for you to go forward, it's not God. Stop saying this. God placed this on my heart. He didn't. He didn't. Even if he started it, you took over. You hijacked it from the Lord. You've taken over. It's no longer God's project. And I, I love my God. Listen, you know, like <laughs> the thing that happened with children. If you give, I give my daughter, give her five pounds. We now go, I gave her the five pounds. We're now going, please, can you buy, oh, can we use your five pounds if you could buy that? Oh, but it's mine. <laughs> Wait, doesn't that just sound like God? Like, before, ah, easy now, calm down. <laughs> Put your glasses on first. <laughs> See this guy, sharp guy. <laughs> t shirts <tuck, tuck. laughs> Before it was yours, it was mine. And even after I've given it to you, the one that gave it to you has more where it comes from. Relax. If I did that, hold him back. Uh, no, 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 it's mine. You think that's going to make you rich? No, the person that gave it to you is richer. Whatever God gives you, whatever God gives you, you say, this is God's idea, this is God's gift. 
<laughs> you were there singing. I surrender all. Give me something now. <laughs> I surrender all. Are you still finding my key? This guy is fake, man. <laughs> David, you want to go and show him the key? <laughs> you know? And then they decide that, look, we, uh, we are just seeing you. You've become, a, you've become a hindrance to blessing the people. We can't see God because you are too big. And they tell you to step aside. And you go, what? What? Do you, I, I make this choir work. Take me out and see what happens. Do you know what? Take that person out. That gift has been corrupted. Self has entered into that gift. Now it's become maggots. What you serve out to people now is dead. It's no longer alive. You know, the preaching has to be, it's about me and how I look good and how I make the people see me as a, as a great man of God. It's, from that moment on, it's a lie. The moment the focus begins to shift on the, on the, the vessel rather than the giver, it becomes idolatry. And God fights that. It's not about you. It's about genuinely helping and serving people. You get regular. See, if you're doing something for God and he's not speaking to you about it, he may not be the one that, uh, that started it all. If you're not getting any instructions from him on how to run it, he is not the manufacturer. If you get no, how do I put this without, since, since we are still in February, you in a, I know that you guys are in a relationship, we've got married people in the house, and God is not speaking to you about your relationship. Maybe he's not the one that was involved. I'm not saying that he's going great or it might be going great. It might be going terrible. But either way, if he's the one that was involved in the beginning, he will keep speaking to you about it. If it's going beautiful, he will keep talking to you about how we can, how we can be better. If it's going terrible, he'll be talking to you either to comfort you or to give you instructions on how to make things better. Why? He's involved. If he's not talking to you, you are either deaf or he was never involved in the first place. And he is, not, he is not forced. He cannot be cajoled. He cannot be, be hoodwinked to be forced into something that he never started. Never. Who's going? Oh, I like the way somebody said it. He says, if God chooses not to answer you, you know those the people that say, Father, if you are God, if you are God, you will do this. Somebody said, if he doesn't do it, who is going to arrest him? Who? So, you know, I'm so glad I'm not God. But if I were, that's the time I would deliberately not answer. And then I will now show, I will show up in, in, in angelic form. I say, I did not answer you. Do something. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on. Arise and shine. <laughs> in fact, I take your light. <laughs> Aren't you glad I'm not God? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not good. <laughs> I'm very glad. If it is God, he will, re I've talked about that, he will ask you to release it. He will. He will. He will. If it is God, he will ask you to release it. Look, if it's a business, there will be a time when he will say, I need that business. I need to use it. And you're like, ah, but this is the one that makes money for us. And, go, and I can imagine the father go, I know, I know. I know, I know, still give it. Ah, 
Papa, <laughs> where do we go from here? But he will never take anything from you without already having something in place for you. Never, never. He never does that. I'm telling you again, never. Read scripture, never. I've shown you guys before. Every time here in the New Testament, even not even Old, New Testament, every time he requests something from somebody, go and check it if he ever took it from them. John chapter 4, woman by the well, give me water to drink. The woman said, you don't even have anything to collect water, you're asking me. And I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew. Read the whole of John chapter 4, he never drank from that woman. Even though his original question was, give me water to drink. Never drank. Instead, he gave her living water. He says, I will give you living water. This one you will drink and you will thirst again. The one I'm giving you, you will drink and you will never thirst again. Her life was never the same. Why? She was willing to give. And I'm not talking money, so today we're not collecting an offering. So nobody starts thinking, mm, is this some kind of offering message? After this, we'll not say, mm, the Lord said. Just save all your money for Tisha's Tuk Tuk. <laughs> give it to me. Give, give, give Don't you want us to give you money for your talk shop? Uh-huh, well done. This guy already knows business at his age. He's <laughs> a very sharp guy. <laughs> you know, let's go on. Where else? John chapter 21. He got to them at the, uh, they were fishing. Uh, friend, do you have any fish? Catch some fish. So that we can have breakfast. John chapter 21. Catch some fish so that we can have breakfast. Oh, we have caught nothing. Okay, throw to the other side. They threw to the other side. They caught fish. They dragged the fish. Peter obviously jumped into the, he jumped after they saw the fish. He knew that's the Lord. He jumped into the water. He ran all the way to the, to the, to the shore. The rest of them brought the fish. When they got to the shore, it, it doesn't make sense unless you read it with open eyes. They got to the shore. There was already fish on, it, it, there was a fish breakfast ready. So why was he asking them for fish? There's nothing God asks of you. If it, husband, if he's asking, release your wife, let me, allow me. Don't, not pastor that said that though. It has to be God. It has to be God, though. There. Mm. If pastor is telling you, OJ, release. <laughs> Uncle, hey, don't do that, though. You better don't. You just say, ah, pastor, hey, bless you, sir. I'll pray about that, sir. <laughs> let, let me confirm with the Lord. <laughs> but if the Lord is saying, yes, ah, no, ah, I can't, ah, my wife, girl, no, 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 nah, no, ah, father, 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 father. <laughs> And it's not a priest. <laughs> I'm telling you, release. If God is telling you as a woman, release that man for the, for the work that I've called him for. And you want to be like, ah, no, no, eh, this, eh, eh, in this house. Ah, mm, eh, so you are going to go and do that. And then you leave me by myself. I mean, women don't talk like that. I'm, that's just me. I talk like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, release. Why? If God gave you that person, it was not just about you. It was not just for you. I'm telling you. This is what we share when we do marriage counseling. Let people know that the dream is bigger than you. It's bigger than you. But it takes the two of you coming together to accomplish it. And for that reason, when the Lord, who is the owner of it all, says release release they're coming back better he never takes them to ruin them he told isaac and um, abraham give me your son your, your only son the son whom you love on the way there Exodus, um, genesis chapter 22 on the way there isaac said father the wood is here the uh, thing is here but where's the lamb where's the offering says, the Lord will provide himself. Well done, ma'am. You have released your wife to the Lord already. <laughs> the Lord will provide himself a lamb. And when they got there, when Abraham showed, I am willing to release your best that you gave me back to you. 
God said, no. Now I am willing to release my best to you. Not the lamb that was caught in the thick. In the, in the, in, in the thicket. That was, not the, 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 that was not God's best. At that point, God said, I've seen a father who is willing to release his son, his only son, the son whom he loves. Now I, as the father, will release my son, my only son, the son whom I love. So because of one man's obedience, all men were blessed. Can you see why it was not about Abraham? It was not about Abraham. That obedience was not about Abraham's obedience, uh, was not about Abraham's family. Families that Abraham would not know were going to be blessed just because he obeyed. You say, God gave you that dream. God gave you that vision. God gave you that, that ministry. If it is about you, it's not God. If, it, if you cannot release it into God's hand, if you cannot release it into God's hand, somebody taught me this. He said, you must hold it like you hold a butterfly. Because a butterfly, if you hold it too tight, you squash it. If you hold it too loose, and you're just like a daisical with it, it'll fly away. You caress it. So it has the ability to, to flutter within. It still moves, but it's safe. Everything. There are times when God will move and tell me, okay, no, this thing, you need to release it. Release that. Next move. Most of you know about the prayer calls. That's the first one. He said, you have been the one in charge of this. You're running it. You're making sure. Release it. Let, split it amongst the leadership. Let them lead. And look, I can confess that now. At the time, obviously, you have to be, you know, be diplomatic. Not all the leaders were current on prayer calls then. <laughs> they weren't even, they were making the prayer calls then. They were still struggling. And now you're telling me to release it to them. Now they will be leading prayer calls even though they will not even show up. You almost want to ask God, are you sure? But because he said it, we did it. And almost overnight, the amount of people that had access to prayer grew. What I thought would now destroy it, increased it. Whatever you say God gave you, God blessed me with a job, we will know. We will know if it was God. It might be your effort. And guys, please understand what I'm talking about. If it's your effort, it's your effort. Just say it's your effort. You did it. You were, you were fantastic at the interview. It was you. Amen. Praise God. Move on. But if you're saying God did it, this is what God gave me. One day, the Father will show up. Esther, it was God that gave her the throne. Did he not come one day? Walked up to her through the lips of Mordecai. They have told that they're going to destroy us. Go to the king and petition on our behalf. Esther sent a message back to Mordecai. The king has not asked to see me in a long time. And nobody shows up to the king unannounced. Uninvited, in fact. You don't go there uninvited. Otherwise, you, he will kill you. It's not that he will be upset with you. He will kill you. So basically, that's why her prayer, when she said, if I die, I die. That's what she meant. Because she knows that this king, if you show up unannounced, uninvited, he'll kill you. He's not like, oh, why do you do that? You disrespect me. Come on, get out of here. No, 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 no. Get her. Bind her. Go and crucify her. That, he was so erratic. So that was Mordecai, basically, that was God through Mordecai saying, give me the throne. Give me the throne. I gave you the throne, right? Give it back to me. Use it to serve me. Uh, Esther could have said, uh, I've enjoyed my place here. And it's nice. The food is good. The company is all right. Guys, look, just, let's just keep praying. <laughs> Can we just keep trusting God? But don't, don't come and see me again. <laughs> so don't, don't, it's okay. It's okay. Don't. That's when you start blocking them. <laughs> block them on Instagram. Block them on WhatsApp. Block, just block them on everything. I said, oh, we are trying to call you. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. 
but you don't. Instead, before you do it, Esther said, okay. Mordecai had to remind her, he says, don't you know, maybe for this reason, you have been brought to the, to the throne. For this reason, basically, for th this was the reason why God promoted you. This was the reason why God favored you. You thought it was about you? You thought it was because you're cute? You thought because you're smart? I see people talk sometimes and they go on. Oh, eh, eh, I'm the one doing this. I'm the only one doing this. And, uh, relax. God had a bigger plan and he looked and he said, who can I use? And he chose to use you. Now you're making noise. I'm telling you now, I've seen it before. I've seen God shut down people. I know some people will be watching online thinking, oh my God, is he, is he issuing threats? I'm not issuing threats. I'm just saying what I saw. I've seen God shut down people and then raise somebody else. And you know what? Nobody is better than anybody else, right? But this is the way the scripture put it. He will shut down the mighty and raise the lowly. I mean, the person that you, could, you didn't even think was anything, that person, just so that God can show you that it was not you. It's not how deep you are. You're not that deep. He will bring a stuttering fool to preach a message and thousands will be saved and you with your eloquence. Oh, me, I don't, me, I don't, you. <laughs> I don't know who speaks like that, but I'm sure there's somebody in this world that speaks like that. You know, and the Lord said, <laughs> and you think that that's what's doing it? You think that's what's making it work? You think that's, what, that's why the people are coming? That's why the people are blessed because of you? You think? You think? <laughs> Out of the mouth of infants, babes, he ordains strength. Don't you ever think that the gift you have is because of you. It's not because of you. He has a plan and he has a purpose that is beyond you. And for that reason, he invests in you. When God gives you a gift, the great, he's the greatest compliment. He's saying, I can trust this thing in your hand. So that the day I come back to ask for it for the use of what it is meant for, you will release it. I'll end with this um, extra, um, in, in the book of um, Exodus. All the gold, the silver, the precious stones. God told him in Exodus chapter 12, I will speak to the Egyptians on your behalf. And he did. And they went, and everywhere they went, as they spoke to the Egyptians, they got it. Could you imagine how gassed? Imagine if that was you. Imagine God said that today. Listen. Oh, thou flowing rivers, I have work for you to do, to do, to do, to do. Obviously, God echoes. You know, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. Go down, 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 down. To every high street bank, 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 bank. And what, <laughs> whatsoever thou ask it, ask it, ask it, ask it, ask it, ask it. Thou shalt receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. I you know, because I know you, because I know you. Oh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he has missed, he's, he's, he's drunk, he's not. And then one person, Tiffany is usually that person. Tiffany now decides, I'll just test it. And she just goes to NatWest. And they say, oh, what would you like, ma'am? Um, $2.5 million, oh, pounds. And I go, would you like that in 50s? Eh? Trust Tiffany, because she's a good person. Tiffany, as, as they're doing it, she will just bring out her phone and put it in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it works! It works! It works! Everybody, from that moment on, for those who are working and those who are not working, everybody just take a break. <laughs> Rush to the bank. We go from one bank to the other, one bank to the other. Hey, 10 million. And they said, hey, 50s? Do you want it as, a, as a, a bank transfer, direct transfer? Do you want it in cash? I know you guys, cash. <laughs> Nobody trusts bank transfer. <laughs> and then at the end of all of that, God now says, the reason why I gave you favor before them is because there's something I want to do in the wilderness. Bring it. That's when you will know. Ah, at that point. They say, I, I spent it all. 
I didn't know. You didn't, Pastor, you didn't tell us. You didn't tell us that I was. I already bought, I, I, I bought a house. I bought two, in fact, three houses. One of them is for investment. The other one is for homeless people. Well, how many homeless people have been there since you bought it? I bought a car. It's, pastor, seriously, if you, that, that's Ladi. I know Ladi. Ladi is very sharp. Ladi said, Pastor, you know me. You know me. If you had told me, you know, if you had told me, I wouldn't have bought that Bentley. But you didn't say at the time. You didn't say. I bought the Bentley now. What do you want me to do? I can't take it back. Of course you can take it back. You can take it back. <laughs> That's what the children of Israel did. They thought that the favor that they got was because of them. And then they turned the gold into a god. That's what people do. We turn gold into God and we begin to worship it. It is not so. It's not so. Whatever is God's idea, it's God's project. It is for the Lord. He has every right to determine what happens to it. I'll touch on just one more and then for, for next week. Not, I won't do that today. We'll do that next week. But in truth, just two, there are actually two more points in there. We'll do that next week. It's by the grace of God. Let's rise. The prayer for today is really a prayer of dedication. I want you to, de- look, because the things that we're talking about are, are real. They're real for you and real for me. And it takes a sold out soul to be able to make these decisions. If you're still all about yourself, you cannot then use God's gift for other people. It's contrary to your nature. So just pray and speak to God and say, Lord, help me work in my spirit. Work upon my mind. Renew my mind. Reorientate my thinking. Help me to see you in everything. You know the, the things that God has given you. You know the positions that where God has placed you. Some of you are like Esthers that have been placed in high positions. Some of you are like Mordecai who have been placed in lowly but influential positions. Some of you are, are like the children of Israel who have been given so much. So much has just been at your disposal. Ask God, work upon me. Work upon my heart. Purify my thinking. Help me, oh God. Help me to understand that I'm a steward. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, it says that it is required of stewards to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. To be faithful. To be faithful. To be faithful. To be found faithful in the day, Father Lord, of whatsoever you have committed to my hands. Teach me, oh God. Help me to see what you see. Help me to see what you see. That that which I birth will be of your nature according to your word. Lord, no matter how big, for those of you who already have a dream that God has placed and is bigger than you and is scaring you, speak to God about that. Part of the reason why it's bigger than you is because it's meant to drive you to your needs. It is designed to make you cry out for help. So that you don't become self-sufficient. But God dependent. Father, I thank you for every child, every woman, every man that is in this house. Lord, everyone that you have committed a dream, a project, a ministry, a gift, into our hands. We look to you. Where we have dropped the ball, where we have made it about ourselves, we repent and we say we are sorry. Where we have run it and made it out like it's all about us. Have mercy, O God. You who know the end from the beginning, would you trust us again? Holy Spirit, tutor us that we'll be diligent in the little so that much more can be committed into our hands. We thank you for those whom you have surrounded us with, those who have journeyed with us, even for those who have journeyed against us because they are all part of the project. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. And amen. And amen. Channel, I hope that this message has made an impact in your life. Now, don't forget, Like, 
share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can keep up with the things that God is doing through and in us. Okay, till next time, we remain flowing rivers. We're bursting life wherever we flow. Birth in life, wherever we flow.